Any other markings? Maybe a tattoo? Uh, no, sir. It happened so fast. I think he had on like a black do rag or something like that. You know, you could have lost your life. Yes, sir. But I couldn't risk losing my son. You know, I was hoping to meet you guys under better circumstances on Monday. Monday? Yep. I'll start work with you guys next week. Nathan Hayes. Kept wondering how I recognize your name. Adam Mitchell. Shane Ford. Hey, good to meet you. Good to meet you. So why Albany? I wanted to move back to give my family a better pace. A slower pace. <laughs> well, I'd say welcome back, but I hate to say it after such a rotten day. Well, my son is okay. So I still say it's a good day. So would you have held onto the wheel? Well, I can think of a few ways he could have died, but I guess he did save his kid's life. Nah. Would you? Where have you been? Working on reports. Trying not to miss another deadline. You missed Emily's piano recital. <sighs> totally forgot about that. She asked if she could stay up till you got home. Dylan is out running. And when he gets back, he's going to ask you about that 5K race again. And I'm going to say no again. I tried to tell him that, but he is determined that he's going to change your mind. And here we go. Dad, can I talk to you? As long as it's not about a 5K race. Why not? A bunch of other guys are running there with their dads. You're already on the school track team, Dylan. They hardly ever let me run because I'm a freshman. And I can't sign up unless you run with me. It doesn't bother me that you like to run. This is not the only 5K race they're going to have. There's going to be others. Suggest that you spend a little more time with him. Victoria, all he wants to do is play video games and go run five miles. Well, then go run with him. I'm 40 years old. There's got to be a better way to spend time with him than torturing myself. Well, you have got to do something. You can help me build a shed in the backyard. Yeah, he's going to see that as your project. Besides, he's at school most of the time anyway. Hey, Daddy. Hey, sweetheart. I'm sorry I missed your recital. That's okay. I messed up three times. You did? Yeah. Then Hannah Stewart messed up four times, so I felt a little bit better. You little stinker. Oh, by the way, 
Emily has been invited to Hannah's birthday party next Friday. But I told her she was going to have to ask you first. Please, Daddy, please let me go. I promise I'll do my chores and my homework every day. Please. She committed any crimes in Mr. Minnish lately? Actually, no. She's been very good. She even cleaned her room without me asking her. Not by putting everything in the closet, right? Uh, all right. Do you owe me a really big hug? Yes. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Uh, all right, Princess. Too many birthday parties. You have too many friends. All right. You go to bed. Some grilling steaks on Saturday. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to come over and eat one. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, David, you got no life. Why don't you come over, too? I've got a life, man. Oh, yeah? What are you doing? This Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess it depends if, um, I mean. Hey, I'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, if everyone's here, let's get started. First things first, Deputy Thompson has now survived his rookie year. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that means you can start using real bullets now. <laughs> we'll see you out there. Right, yeah. Secondly, I want to introduce Thompson's new partner. His name's Nathan Hayes. He'll be joining our shift. He has eight years of experience in Atlanta with the Fulton County Sheriff's Department, uh, but he's from here, and we're glad you're here. Let's welcome him. Okay, guys, we have uh, two new warrants out today. We'll pass those out. Clyde and Jamar Holloman, two frequent flyers who have uh, opened up a new drug operation on the 600 block of Sheffield. I'd like uh, both warrant teams to handle this one. Everyone else, uh, stick to your normal beats. Sheriff has something he wants to share with us this morning. Chair. Thank you. I had an email come across my desk I'd like to share with you. A recent study was done on the increase in violent gang activity. In almost every case, each gang member had a similar attribute. Runaways, dropouts, kids on drugs, and teens in prison. That attribute is that most of them came from a fatherless home. To put it another way, when a father's absent, kids are five times more likely to commit suicide, abuse drugs, 20 times more likely to wind up in prison. Look, I know your shift works hard, and I know you see the worst side of people out there. But when you clock out, Go home and love your families. All right, you're dismissed. Get out of here. Victoria, the truck with the lumber is about to show up. Just tell them to pile next to the driveway, all right? Right. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, hold on. Hey, that's the sheriff. I got to take this, all right? Okay, love you. Bye. Hey, sir. Yes, sir. We did that. Thank you, sir. We'll take care of it. All right. Love you. Bye. Oh, no, no, no. Did you just tell the sheriff that you loved him? <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Should I call him back? <laughs> Why? To tell him that you don't? <laughs> 693C and route to the 600 block of Sheffield, 1099 reference. Hey, 50. Yo, 5 0 5 0 Thompson, as you got the back? 10 4. Knocked them, but they're up to no good. Yeah. Got a feeling about this one. Yeah, I'm feeling it too. You got the back door, rookie? Yeah, I'll take it. I'm not a rookie anymore. Who is it? Sheriff's office. Yeah? We have a warrant for the arrest of Clyde and Jamar Holloman. I don't want nothing to do with this. I ain't even supposed to be here. Ready? 
clear. Groove, they use the same interior decorator you use, Shane. Just wash my back, Mitchell. and Jamar Holloman, we have a warrant for your arrest. If we can do this the easy way or the hard way, I suggest you come on down. Last chance. Don't make this any harder than it needs to be. What are you doing up here, kid? Uncle Clyde told me to walk around here until he gets back. Come on down. David, where are you? I'm headed to Whitman. Oh. Always gotta be the hard way, doesn't it? Look at what we have here. You're just digging a deeper hole for yourself, aren't you? Adam, I got the suspect 1095. Help Nathan if you can. 10 4. Good job, Shane. Where is he? I think he's headed back up towards Sheffield. All right. There he is, there he is. I got him. 
slingshot. Let's do it. How far are you gonna make me chase you, man? Oh, I'll get you over this. You got some wheels, man. Put them out of gas. <laughs> Welcome to the party. What'd you do, go out for a burger? <laughs> Should've got pulled over for driving too slow. Yeah, I got Jamar in the back. <laughs> hey guys, I'm really sorry about that. I got turned around, it was my bad. They don't pay us enough for this job. They had to give us a bonus for catching them on foot. Look, man, you gotta learn the streets. I needed you. Look, it's not gonna happen again. Boss wants to see you in the trailer. Javi, what are you doing home? Why aren't you at work? They let me go. What? Why? I was the last one hired and they went over budget. Why didn't you call me? I could have talked to them. We've got two children I to I tried to tell him that, Carmen. But it made no difference. We owe $400 in a week, Javi. All I have is rice and beans to feed the kids, and Marcos, Marcos needs shoes. I tried to tell him, Carmen. I'm trying. It's three hundred dollars. Get whatever you need for the children. I'll go out to my four. Javi, wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to react that way. Why don't you take the car? We'll walk to the store. I'm not going to travel my family walks. Carmen, I've asked God for help. He will find me work. Do you have anything I can take with me to eat? La tortilla. Can you please tell Jordan to get out of our room? He won't leave my stuff alone. I'm not bothering her. Yes, you are. Jordan, I told you five minutes ago to go brush your teeth and put your PJs on. Now, do I have to get Mr. Pow Pow? No, ma'am. Well, let's start moving in that direction. Quick, 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 quick. And Jade, I don't want you up all night texting that boy. You hear me? <sighs> if he's interested in you, we need to know more about him before you even think about developing feelings for him. Hey, what boy? Another saggy pants boy is interested in Jade, but this time he's 17. Mom, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal when you're only 15. Here, hold this while I get another diaper. Is this someone you met at school? Yes, he's nice, though. His grandmother goes to Mount Zion. Does he go to Mount Zion, too? I think, when she takes him. His parents don't go to church? He lives with his grandma. Has he asked you out? Yes. Jade, come on, baby. We already yeah. talked about this. You can't go down on a date with anyone until they come talk to me, and they have no business talking to me until you're 17. But it's not even a real date. We're just going to the mall to walk around. If a boy has asked you to go anywhere with him, it's a date. <coughs> Nathan, <coughs> Adam <Adam-Mitchell>. Mitchell. <coughs> you're trying to kill me. That stuff is nasty. You're not supposed to be there. <coughs> 
Look, I appreciate this. My car should be ready in a couple days. Not a problem. That shirt's a problem. <laughs> you don't like my shirt? <laughs> Emily, what do you think of my shirt? I love it. Your daughter loves my shirt. Yeah, my daughter's nine years old. Okay. Well, Tyler thought it was cool, so I got it. <clears throat> so your 12-year-old son's giving you fashion advice. No, I see no one gives you fashion advice. <laughs> <laughs> How is Tyler? Oh, he's good. You know, I only get him every other weekend, and even then, it's only after Mia's filled his head with her toxic opinions of me. You know, a third of my paycheck goes to Alamo. Let's uh, talk about this later. Why? What's Alamo? <laughs> it's a uh, real bad condition Mr. Shane has. It makes him wear ugly clothes. Hey. <laughs> you know what I like about you? What? Oh, yeah, never mind. I, I was thinking of somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just standing right here on the curb. You got five minutes, Cabana boy. Hey, can you bring me a lollipop? Yes, I will, sweetheart. I'm not getting you one. Oh, Daddy, get it up. I love this song. Oh, I've heard this before. Who is it? No, oh, sweetie, what are you doing? Come dance with me. Emily, th this is a parking lot. This is not where people dance. Hey, please, just for this song, come dance with me, Daddy, please. Emily, people can see us. It's okay, they don't mind, Daddy. They don't care, Daddy. Please. Tell you what, you dance right here and I'll watch. <sighs> oh, okay. Okay, when you're ready to dance, this is what you do. First, you put your right hand around my waist like this. Then you hold your other hand out like this. Then we sway back and forth to the music. <laughs> and you can spin. Are you sure you don't want to dance? <laughs> I'm dancing with you in my heart, sweetie. <laughs> Emily, you're trying to teach your dad how to dance. He won't dance with me. That's because he's a fuddy-duddy with no sense of style. All right, everybody in the car. Mr. Fuddy-duddy's leaving. Your Highness. Thank you. Emily, who taught you how to dance? Because I know it wasn't your father. I dance at home with my wife. Not because she's too embarrassed to dance with you in public? <laughs> you know, you could be walking right now. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, no! <laughs> I know there's no way you're doing that again. <laughs> Absolutely not. Watch me. Right, you want me to line four. nine more up like I did last time? <laughs> <laughs> They're in there wanting to know what we're talking about. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I'm not talking about anything. I mean, the steak was great. Thing tastes just like my dad's, and that guy used to grill out all the time. Yeah, mine too. Now, speaking of dads, they emailed the sheriff the other day. Think that thing was accurate? I do. I grew up seeing that kind of stuff all the time. You know, I wonder where all the good fathers went to. Ain't that the truth? What? I remember you talking about your dad. Wasn't he like an usher or something at your church? Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. As soon as the church service started, he'd step out back for a smoke. You know, one time, he says to me, I better not catch you drinking. Had a beer in his hand when he said it. <laughs> My mom used to nag him. That is, till they got divorced. It's not like I don't love the guy, but it's kind of hard to respect a hypocrite. Mm. How about you, David? Mm. I had a good dad. I guess. I mean, the guy wasn't perfect. My parents split up. He had an affair. But I think he regretted it, and I struggled with it for a while. But, you know, divorce just comes with the territory now. I disagree, man. Divorce happens because you're making an option. Nathan, you don't always know what's going to happen. You know, people change. You can't always work stuff out. Sometimes you need to part ways. I think I agree with Nathan. Thank you. Uh, people don't fight for their marriage anymore. That's right. What do you get married? Have some kids. You're going to figure out real quick how much you don't know. <laughs> Man, if it wasn't for my faith in God, I'd be in a tailspin right now. Yeah, me too. Mm. Look, 
Guys, not everyone believes in that stuff. You guys are all religious, and that's fine, but you can't think religion is the only way to live your life. Religious? Yeah. It didn't work out for your parents. Didn't they get a divorce? <laughs> that's the problem. They were never married. Listen, my dad had six children from three different women. And I was the fifth child. Before I was born, he had already left. I'm 37 years old, and I've never met my biological father. Well, it looks like you turned out all right. Well, that's because a man in my neighborhood named William Barrett mentored me as a teenager, taught me about God, and every Father's Day, he's the one that I call. I'm telling you, man, not having a father as a child, man, scarred me in more ways than I can count. Look, guys, I, I've enjoyed our little heart-to-heart, -heart, but <laughs> I need to take off and pay a few bills or there's still something left in my paycheck. Oh, speaking of paycheck, I talked to my man, Javier. The guy did a phenomenal job on my deck, and he's available next week, but he wants 150 a day. Uh, call him. You gotta have somebody who knows what they're doing. I'm taking vacation time, so I gotta get it done. So, 8 o'clock Monday. Okay. I'll call him. See you boys in church tomorrow. Uh, that's it. Oh, I told you. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I can be there today. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be there as soon as I can. Goodbye. Who are you talking to? I got the job, but I need to leave right now. They're building a new office on Westover, and they need more men. Thank God, Javi, the rent is due on Friday, and I tell you to take the car, but the tank is on empty. I don't mind walking when I have good news. God, I told you, God would give me a job. I'd give you a big kiss on the mouth, but your breath is very bad this morning. I love you, too. I... We that rock pile move over there. Do you understand? Yeah. All right, well, we're waiting on Let's go. Uh, sir, are you Richard? Yeah. yeah. My name's Javier Martinez. I was told to come see you for work. Oh, man, I, I decided the last three guys I need. Sorry, man, we're good to go. Uh, I could do most anything, sir. I could do woodwork, brickwork, uh, even drywall. Listen, man, I said I got what I need, all right? Unless someone quits, I don't need you. tratando de hacer todo lo posible para proveer lo necesario para mi familia. Y he necesitado tu ayuda. Pero no me ayudas. Yo les he dicho a mi familia que tú nos ibas a ayudar. Que ibas a proveer. ¿Qué les digo? Que vamos a perder la casa. ¿Qué tú quieres que yo haga? Lightning just standing in the middle of the alley. You don't know him. You need his help, so you better start off on the right foot. All right. I'll be here, right? Jess? Adam Mitchell. I didn't mean to yell at you. I should have come out and talked to you. This is my wife, Victoria. Hey, Javier. Nice to meet you. Let me go get you a water. Got the plans for the shed right here. My old one's falling apart. Uh, you didn't bring any tools? No. All right, we'll just have to share. Um... I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you got a work permit? Yes, I do. Good. Let me show you what we're doing. You 
gave her blue eyes and blonde wavy hair. Gave her a cute but devilish grin. Javi, is that you? It's me. Papi, Papi. Papi. <laughs> ¿Y cómo están mis niños preciosos? ¿Se portaron bien? Yes, read a story. Read a story. Okay, Isabel. Let Daddy get cleaned up and eat. Come, so I've got Joe. a special story Come. for you today. Come. And you too, buddy. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Off to bed, off to bed. And let Daddy eat. So, how did it go today? Terrible. Then wonderful. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I went to that job this morning, mm -hmm. and they said they didn't need me. So where have you been all day? Well, that's the thing. I was walking home asking God what it is he wanted me to do, when out of nowhere this guy comes out of his house and starts calling me by name. Then he asked me to go help him build a shed. Look! You made $150 today? Yes. How did he know you? I have no idea. Why didn't you ask him? I was scared. Are you going back tomorrow? Eight o'clock. Carmen, few times have I ever felt that God was helping my faith. But today was one of them. It felt so good to work hard. Javi, I know God loves you. He listens to you because you honor him. And all I want to do right now is to hug you and kiss you. But you smell so bad. I can't bring myself to do it. Give me 15 minutes. <laughs> I'll heat up your dinner, mi amor. Dylan, you need to run earlier. Ten thirty is too late for you to be out. I just did it. Who said? We live across the street. You can feel the flames. She says I need to show attention. We're just so excited. Little girl got out of the bed. Emily, sweetie, come on. Let's go to bed. order to be able to drive in any... Good, little G. So, so, man. Yeah, you win. And now that I ain't got Clyde and Jamal no more, I'm gonna have you making those runs for me. Let me tell you something, man. This little pain you think you feeling, that ain't nothing compared to what we'll do if you ever try to leave or turn on one of us. Twan, get him up, man. Enjoying your vacation, man. You missed a nasty fight on night that <laughs> Oh, yeah, that guy was crazy. Mm -hmm. Vacation. I've been spending all day working on my shed. <laughs> Sorry about my man Javier not showing up. I meant to call you the other night. He was in the hospital. He's got kidney stones. What are you talking about? He's been helping me on my shed for three days. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my friend Javier. That's who I'm talking about. Showed up Monday morning, has been working like a machine. Oh, it's impossible. The guy's in the hospital. Shane. 
He's at my house right now. I left him 10 minutes ago. You're out of your mind. <laughs> the guy's got, like, tubes and IVs. <laughs> What, what does Javier look like? <laughs> no, no, he's like 6'2", uh, thin as a rail, goatee. No, 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 I'd say maybe 5'10", stocky, clean shaven. <laughs> look, guys, not... look, guys, I'm not a genius, yeah. but you guys aren't talking about the same dude. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I mean, I figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's at your house, but it ain't Javier. <laughs> dude, he's at your house right now. Uh, by himself. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. <laughs> hey, hey, we order for you. Who's going to pay for this? Hey. Is from lunch already? Javier, what's your name? Javier? No, no, no. What's your full name? Javier Eduardo Martinez. What's your full name? Adam Thomas Mitchell. You know Shane Fuller? No. What's his full name? No, no, no. Who told you I was building a shed? You did. Who told you I'd give you 150 a day? You did. What? Well, how did you know to call me Javier? Thought your name was Javier. It is. Why were you standing in my alley on Monday morning? Because I needed a job. Why did you ask me to help? Because I thought you were a guy named Javier. I am. Don't, uh, you don't have a problem with your kidneys, do you? No. Do you? No. I understand this. What I can tell you is by you giving me this job, it has been an answer to my family's prayers. Well, you're, you're doing good work. You sure I can't get you anything to eat? No. My wife's lunch was big enough already. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to go get something to eat. Okay. You hungry again already? Hey, how you doing? What's up? What happened to your face? What? Oh, this? This nothing. I was just playing around with some friends. Anyway, check out my ride. Is that your car? No, that's a friend, but I can drive it pretty much whenever. I really came to see if you want to go get something to eat with me. I don't know. I have to ask my dad and see. Hey, Jay, dinner's almost ready. Hello, how are you? I'm good. You must be Jay's father. I am, and you are? Daddy, oh. this is my friend Derek. Nice to meet you, Derek. You just in the neighborhood? Well, I actually came to see if Jay want to go get something to eat with me. I'll bring her back later. Jay, why don't you go in the house? I'll be in in a few minutes, all right? Thanks for coming over, Derek. I guess I'll just see you later. Come here, let me talk to you for a minute. Derek, I appreciate your interest in my daughter. But until she's older, we're not allowing her to go out on dates. Look, this ain't even really a date. We're just trying to hang out. Mm -hmm. It's important for us that she be older and for us to know who she's with. You got a problem with me? Look, Derek, we just don't know you, okay? And any young man interested in my daughter needs to explain to me the purpose of the relationship. The purpose? Look, it ain't like I'm going to take advantage of a 15-year-old girl. Oh, I agree. Now, look, if you'd like to get to know us better, you're welcome to join us for lunch on Sunday. We'd be happy to have you. Right. How'd you get that bruise on your face? You know what? That's none of your business. You should let Jake make her own decision. I do not like that boy. He is very disrespectful. Well, how can we be respectful when Daddy just runs him off like that? Jay, listen. If he shows no respect for us, then he won't respect you either, sweetie. That's right. Baby, you've got to trust us. That boy has a lot of growing up to do. We better go eat while it's still hot. Come on, Jay. Let's go to the table. I'm not hungry. Well, I'd still like for you to sit with us. So your wife homeschools your kids? For now, we feel it's important that we give them a good foundation when they're young. Seems good. You have two kids. I do. Nail gun? Please. Emily's my sweet nine-year-old. A 
and Dylan is my stubborn 15-year-old. Well, I think he's just going through a stage. You can meet him in a minute when he comes home. I think Emily's at a birthday party. So I had this thought. You know that thread factory on Clark? Yeah. I know the guys that run it. If you'd like, I can talk to them about getting you a job. You mean like a full-time job? Why not? I'd recommend you. I would be very grateful. Adam, I need you to come with me right now. What's wrong? Emily, she's been in a wreck. Talk to me, Shane. Emily was picked up after school by the Martins. Their SUV was hit by a drunk driver at a four-way stop on Emily's side. Nathan went to get Victoria. It doesn't look good, Adam. I'm sorry. Oh, God, help my daughter. Please, Lord. At a moment like this, silence seems to be the only expression that fits. What can we as mere men say to a grieving and shattered heart? We speak today because we have a living hope. Death is no respecter of persons. Death is no respecter of youth. Death is a painful intruder and a pernicious reminder of our human condition. But I stand before you today to declare that we have a living hope, and that causes us to rejoice greatly. You see, our hope today is found in the fact that Jesus is no longer entombed. He lives. And because he lives, Emily lives. Because he lives, the grieving broken heart has hope and reason to rejoice. sense of this for me. I feel like I'm in a fog or some type of black hole. <laughs> I really want to get out. wrong to let her go to that party. <laughs> if I had said no, she'd still be here. Victoria. <laughs> we can't do that. Well, why is she the one that had to get killed? And why is that drunk still alive? Why? Why? <laughs> Thank you. 
There's so many things I didn't say. I should have been a better father. You're still a father. How did you get in here? I know how to open the lock, Dylan. Call me or something? Just want to see how you were doing. <laughs> Is anybody doing okay around here? Is there anything you want to talk about? Why do you want to talk? Everyone who comes into this house just keeps saying the same thing over and over. They're just trying to help, son. They're not. Dylan, we're all hurting. All we can't do is block each other out. We need each other. You don't need me. Can I play my game now? Yes. to see her graduate. Never get to walk her down the aisle. Adam, don't. Don't go there. How am I supposed to let her go?
I should have danced with her. <laughs> Why didn't I dance with her? Master, I appreciate you being with me. You're welcome, Adam. I'm so sorry for what you and Victoria have been going through. I can't make sense of anything, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, I, I guess I kind of feel like I'm in the dark. And I, and I don't want to be there for Victoria, but, uh, my emotions are all over the place. So I don't know what to do. Adam, there, there needs to be a grieving process. And the Lord is the one who carries you through it. And it takes time. It takes time for healing. <laughs> healing. I've heard many people say who've lost a loved one. That in some ways, it's like learning to live with an amputation. You do heal, but you're never the same. But I would also say that those who go through this and trust in the Lord discover a comfort and an intimacy with God that most people never experience. I want to trust him. I just don't understand what he's doing. He doesn't promise an explanation, but he does promise to walk with us through the pain. And the hard choice for you is whether or not you're going to be angry for the time you didn't have with her or grateful for the time that you did have. I don't want to be angry. I want to heal. How would you like for me to help you? I want to know what God expects of me as a father. And I want to know how to help my wife and my son. I think you were going for a doctorate. I feel like it. Where's Dylan? Oh, he's getting a shower. Ran another five miles. Says he already needs new running shoes. But I'm going to go to the store, okay? All right. I don't think I could run five miles. Well, who says you have to? Just been thinking about running with him. Really? I'm accepting the fact I have to learn how to do the hard things. I've never enjoyed running, but it is the best way to spend time with them. Well, how is your research coming? Sobering. You know, I've been doing about half of what I should have been doing as a dad. And there is so much in Scripture about being a father. I never took time to look it up. Sheriff. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. We did. We turned that in yesterday. Adam, bye. Love you. Thank you, sir. We will. Love you. Bye. Okay. Hello? Sir? Hey. Hey. Got a lot of homework? Not really. Got your learner's permit? 
Why? Because I need you to drive me to the mall, get you some new running shoes. If you don't mind, I might get a pair for myself. Are you serious? Hey, I'll be glad you could come. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I've never been in the back of a police car before. <laughs> How's my other Javier friend? You liking the new job? Yes, very much. Thanks to Adam. SO to 693C. 693C, go ahead. Deputies need assistance in reference to a 1095 at the intersection of Plantation and Foxfire. 693C, en route. It's going to be gang related. Yeah. Ivy, we'll get to lunch right after we do this, all right? If I tell you to get down, you stay low. Okay. What kind of gang is this? Yeah, they're all jail prep programs, if you ask me. And they're all dangerous. You know, I started a gang once. You were in a gang? We were the Snake Kings. <laughs> snake Kings? <laughs> yes, we had lots of snakes in our neighborhood. So we would throw rocks at them and try to kill them all. <laughs> okay. So how many were in your gang? Only three. My brothers and I. <laughs> so did you kill any snakes? One. <laughs> We thought we were heroes. <laughs> all right, Avi, you just hang out right here, all right? Sure. What do you got? We got three. Possession with intent to distribute. Possession, possession. He's a little belligerent, but uh, I need y'all to go 1095 to jail with one of them for me. I need to separate them. Can you swing it? You can do that. All right. Appreciate it. I'm with Harvey in the back. Wait here, I got an idea. Harvey, I need a favor. What's that? You heard of the Snake Kings? The who? The Snake Kings. You ever crossed them? I ain't heard of no Snake Kings. We got their leader in the back. If he tries to cut you or go for your throat, you yell, we'll stop the car. Wait, ho hold on, man. I ain't getting in the back with no killer. Just stay on your side. Don't look at him. Don't talk to him. You'll be fine. Martinez, you hurt the guy. I'll put you under the jail. You got it? Don't touch him. All right, get in. I, I, hold on, man. I don't want to be in the car with no Snake Kings. Come on, man. Look, hey, they got a lot of room up there. Get in the car. Stay on your side. We will protect you. Here, guys. Roll with it. Let's go south. All you. All you. All right. <laughs> Dispatch is 693C. We're 1095 en route to the jail. ETA 10 to 20. What's he saying, man? Hey, man, just don't talk to him. You stay on your side. Que a lo mejor unas papas fritas con un batido. Hey, man, hey, he's threatening me. Hey, I think he wants to kill me. Just calm down. If he wanted to kill you, you'd be dead by now.
have ever seen. Oh my. Oh man. <laughs> I've never seen somebody so anxious to get to jail. Oh, he is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the guys like him. We've kind of adopted him in our group. <laughs> I, mean, I still can't believe that Carmen brought us three meals after the funeral. I mean, that was so sweet. Mm. I had a good day today. You all right, buddy? We're going to be okay, aren't we? We're going to be all right. I wish I would have been a better brother. Son, and I'm proud of you. Don't you ever forget that, okay? Don't you ever forget that. stuff and tell you why I had you come over here today. It isn't because you just can't get enough of us? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. I'm going to ask you a favor. Avi? Resolution? Yeah. For a while now, I've been struggling with what kind of dad I was to Emily, what kind of father I'm being to Dylan. Adam, you're being too hard on yourself. I mean, you've been a good enough father. That's just it. I don't want to be a good enough father. We have a few short years to influence our kids. Whatever patterns we set for them will likely be used for their kids and the generation after that. We have the responsibility to mold a life. And I don't think that should be done casually. Half the fathers in this country are already failing, and I don't want to be one of them. Okay. Look, I'm all for spending more time with our kids, but don't you think you're taking this a little too far? Shame. It goes way beyond just spending time with your kids. That should be a given. Now, I I'm talking about setting the standards that they need to aim for in life. What kind of standards? Well, when did you first think of yourself as a man? What? No, no, no. I mean, when did you first think, I'm a man now? <laughs> Come on. You can't be serious. We are not talking about this. No, you just humor me for a second. Think about it. Maybe when I moved out, or when I turned 21, I, I don't know. So when you're legal? Yeah. What about you, Shane? I don't know. I mean, when I got my license, or my first job, I mean, what does it matter? Bobby? When my father told me I was, when I was 17, he had to leave for three months to do a job. He told me that he thought of me as a man. He wanted me to take care of the family. I'm learning that God wants me to call out the man and my son. I can't do that lightly. I can't be passive about that. I got these things from studying scripture. I want to sign this as a resolution of what kind of father I want to be to Dylan. And I'm giving you guys permission to keep me accountable. Can I sign this too? Fine. Adam, if you're going to do this, maybe we should all just sign it. No, 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 no. I'm not asking you guys to sign anything. I need this. Dylan needs this. If you guys think you want to sign it, at least take a few days to think about it. I'm not doing this lightly. Hey, Dylan. 
And you're saying you want to do this too. That's what I'm saying. You know, I always thought I was good enough because I thought I was doing better than my father. But that resolution hit me right between the eyes. Baby, there are some days I'm glad I married you. And there are other days I'm really, really, really glad I married you. And this is one of those really good days. It's a really, really good day, huh? Mm-hmm. And by the way, what does this resolution look like that you're going to be signing? What do you mean? I mean, this is not the paper you're going to be signing. This is computer paper. A resolution is something that a father frames and posts on the wall in his home. Well, we didn't talk about all that. And how will you be signing it? Not in jeans and a t-shirt. Something like this needs ceremony. A ceremony? Yes, Nathan. I see a group of well-dressed men and their wives and children making this all official. Baby, if you're going to do this, then do it right. So this resolution deal's gotten pretty big, huh? Well, we just decided that if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. Yeah, seats and everything. Hey, Nathan, can I ask you something? Yeah, what's up? Do you really feel like it messed up your childhood not having a dad? <laughs> More than you know. I struggled with who I was. Trying to prove myself. Almost got in the game. You know, if fathers just did what they're supposed to do, half of the junk that we face on the streets wouldn't exist. Why are you worried about it? You nervous about being a father one day? I already am one. You got a kid? A little girl. She's four now. I was playing ball in college. Hooked up with a cheerleader. I told her to take care of it. She didn't do it. So I got mad and left her to deal with herself. You know, she lives 30 minutes away now. I can't bring myself to go see her. Is she married? No. I just never really loved her, you know? And then hearing you guys talk about how fathers walking out messed up the kids. And then seeing this stuff. I don't want to be one of those guys. David, part of being a man is about taking responsibility. Any fool can have a child. I'm just tired of feeling guilty. Well, let me break it to you this way. You are guilty. Listen, one day you, me, <laughs> and every one of us are going to have to stand before God. And he's going to do what good judges do. Well, and I hope my good outweighs my bad, Nathan. That's not the way it works. You know that. Let me put it this way. Who's the person you're closest to? Problem my mom. Okay. Suppose she was brutally attacked and murdered in a parking lot. The guy was caught and put on trial. But he says, hey, judge, I committed this crime, but I've done a lot of good in my life. If the judge let him go free, would you say he was a good judge or a bad judge? A bad one. That's right. Because the Bible says that God is a good judge, and he will punish the guilty not for what they did right, but for what they did wrong. Because he loved us, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take the punishment that we deserve and put it on himself. And that's why he died on the cross. But it only applies if you accept it. That's why I asked for his forgiveness. I asked him to save me. And I'm a new man because of Christ. You understand what I'm telling you?
Thank you for the nine years I had Emily. I'm grateful. I don't know if I can ask this. But would you tell her I did my side of the dance? Should I have done this? Yes! Put it on for me. Right now? Right now! I want to see you in it! No, 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 no. Here, let me do it. Mira, Papi, it's a bad guapo. Papi, a story? Yes, this is Daddy's suit. He'll wear to his ceremony next week. We'll all be wearing our very best. <laughs> like a rich man. You are a rich man. You have a strong faith, children that love you. Yeah, and a wife that adores you. Stop it, Carmen. Don't make me cry in front of the children. Starting today, I'm implementing a new code of ethics for the entire sheriff's office. No matter how you feel about another employee, I want you to keep your personal feelings to yourself. I don't want to hear how much you love me or any other staff member. It's inappropriate, it's awkward, and it's unacceptable. And Corporal Mitchell, I got you. <laughs> I love you, Adam. I can't tell you what an honor this is for me today to hear the commitment that you men are making for your faith and your families was almost overwhelming. Nathan, I'd like for you to come and stand before me and your wife and children to stand beside me. My son in the faith, I took joy in mentoring you as a young man. And today, 
I take joy in blessing you as a godly father. Are you ready to make this commitment before God and your family? Yes, I am. Then I'd like for you to repeat after me. I, Nathan Hayes, do solemnly resolve before God. I, Nathan Hayes, do solemnly resolve before God. To take full responsibility for myself, my wife, and my children. That I would take full responsibility for myself, my wife, and my children. I will love them, protect them, and serve them. I will love them, protect them, and serve them. And teach them the statutes of God as the spiritual leader of my home. And teach them the statutes of God as the spiritual leader of my home. I will be faithful to my wife to love and honor her. I'll be faithful to my wife to love and honor her. And be willing to lay down my life for her as Christ did for me. And be willing to lay down my life for her as Christ did for me. I will teach my son to love God with all of his heart, all of his mind, and all of his strength. I will teach my son to love God with all of his heart, all of his mind, and all of his strength. And I will train him to honor authority and live responsibly. I will train him to honor authority and to live responsibly. I will confront evil, pursue justice, and love mercy. I will treat others with kindness, respect, and compassion. I will work diligently to provide for the needs of my family. I will forgive those who have wronged me and reconcile with those who I have wronged. I will walk in integrity as a man answerable to God. I will seek to honor God, obey his word, and do his will. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now that each of you has committed to live by this resolution, I bless you in the name of the Lord. But I also have a warning for each of you. Now that you know what you are to do and have committed to do it before God and these witnesses, you are doubly accountable. Let me also assure you that you may have confidence in this resolution and your resolve now, because as you stand here, there's no challenge, no controversy, and no conflict. But I can assure you that challenges will arise conflicts will arise and controversy will arise it is at that moment that in order to live out this resolution you will need courage 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 Dear Amanda, I know it's a shock for you to hear from me, but I need to tell you what's happened in my life. In the last two years, I've become a deputy for the Albany Sheriff's Office. This job is tough, but I work with some of the best guys in the world. Being a cop has forced me to see the worst in people and see how one person's selfish decisions can hurt so many others. Recently, I had a life-changing experience and begin a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I've still got a lot to work on, but he's helping me make sense out of my life and take more responsibility for who I am as a man. For years, I've been afraid to admit that I have a daughter. I'm doing nothing to take care of her. I see now that every child is a gift from God. I now know how wrong I've been and have asked God to forgive me for what I've done to you and Olivia. I'm writing this letter to tell you that I've decided to stop running. If you're willing, I'd like to meet with you and begin the process of rebuilding your trust. In time, and with your permission, I hope to meet Olivia personally and let her know that she is a father who cares about her. I have no other expectations. I'm only asking for a chance to be a part of Olivia's life, and I'll wait for your response. 
Until then, I began to pray for you and Olivia, and have enclosed a symbol of my commitment to begin doing my part to help with her care. Sincerely, David Thompson. Okay, God. Whatever you want to do, I'm ready. My name is Nathan Hayes, and I'm your son. I've wasted too much time being angry with you and asking why you were never there for me. I've always felt like I needed to prove myself to you and that I was worth being loved. But I realized that I have a heavenly father who loves me even when my earthly father did not. But he is more than enough. Because of him, I've forgiven you. He is your judge, not me. Now live with the hope that you gave him your life before you die. So that one day, I'll finally meet you face to face. I'm going to talk to you for a second. Okay. I know every day I live, I realize I need the Lord more. I don't feel like I started well. I want to finish well. What I want for you is that you seek the Lord, that you trust Him, even if it means you're standing alone. You got me? Yes, sir. Now, before I beat you to the corner. Huh, you're not going to beat me to the corner. Just let me get a breath. Okay. What is that? What? Hey! You can't do that! Martinez, have a seat. Thank you, sir. You've been very productive your first month here. You do good work. I'm very grateful to be here. Well, Mr. Martinez, the reason I called you in here is that I'm looking for an additional manager to oversee inventory and shipping. It carries more responsibility, but it pays more. Sound like something you might be interested in? Yes, I would. But before I make my final decision, I'd like for you to work a shift in that department next week. You'll see a list of 17 crates coming in on this sheet. One of those crates will be going to a separate warehouse. Mr. Martinez, when you report the inventory, I'd like for you to report that we received 16 crates. 17 are coming in, but you want me to write down 16? Yes, that's right. I have another purpose for the extra crate.
You are on my team, right? Because I really can't use people who aren't on my team. Tell you what. You think about it tonight and give me your answer in the morning. Make it 10 o'clock. But I'll need to know if you really want this job. Good evening, sir. Hey, Sarge. Hey. I was talking to Sanders. He said the drugs we found on Highland have already been logged in. Is that right? Yeah, 430. Yeah, he told me that uh, 24 bags were turned in. I thought I remembered 30. It says here 24 went to the lab. You sure you guys counted right? Well, maybe not. Tell you what, you guys have been bringing in some pretty heavy hitters here lately. You had that bust over on Gore Street last week. And before that, you brought in that shoebox with six bags of rocks in it. Six bags? That's what I got here. You guys keep this up. You're going to put another drug dealer out of business. Thanks, Sarge. You bet. Are you coming? Yeah, just give me a sec. Yeah. Oh, go get some. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. Hey, Sarge, you got a sec? Yeah. Um, I think I may have an issue. What's that? I think someone's ripping off evidence. Who? One of you guys. Are you sure you want to go down this road? No, I'm not. Javi, we need this job. For the first time in a year, we're able to pay the bills. I know, Carmen, but he made it very clear. If I was not a team player, he did not want me there. Maybe it's not wrong. It just looks that way. He's the owner of the factory. He asked me to write down false information, Carmen. He asked me to lie. When do you have to give him an answer? Ten o'clock. Javi, if he lets you go, promise me that you will call me. If you don't, then I know everything is okay. Javi, I don't want us to go back. I hope you're wrong about this. I hope I'm wrong about this. But what if you're not? I still have to do the right thing. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Martinez. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. How are you? I don't know yet. Please, have a seat. I trust you've had time to think about our conversation yesterday. Yes, sir, I did. Now, what did you decide? Are you on my team? Mr. Tyson, I am very grateful to have a job here. But I cannot do as you have asked. And why is that? Because it is wrong, sir. And it would be dishonoring to my God and my family to lie on that report. Do you understand what this may do to your job here? Yes, sir, I do. Javier, may I shake your hand? Young man, you just gave me the right answer. 
I've been looking for someone to manage inventory and shipping, and quite frankly, you were the last person on my list. But I need somebody I can trust. Will you take the job? We'll adjust your pay. I would be honored to, sir. Good. Then the job is yours. Now, Walter will go over all the specifics with you, and I'll make the announcement to the staff on Monday. Congratulations, Javier. Oh, and Javier, thanks for your integrity. It's rare. Well done, Javier. After six times, I was getting discouraged. Listen to me. The Lord knew we were going to go through this. I was not let go. I know, baby. It's okay. Carmen, you're not listening to me. They did not fire me. They promoted me. What? It was a test, Carmen. They made me a manager. And they're going to raise my pay. A test? I was promoted, Carmen. Everything's going to be okay. I love you, Carmen. And tell the children I love them, too. And that God answered our prayers. I'll tell them, Javi, I love you, too. I'll talk to you soon. Sarge, you call me? Yeah. They're still doing motions in here, and i got to get back to testify. Would you mind running these down to evidence for me? Appreciate it. Okay. Sarge? been doing? What? Just recheck an account before I turn it in? No, no, no. Don't lie to me. You got bags in your pocket right now. You're not going to turn me in. You just make a big, ugly mess and embarrass the entire department. Besides, be your word against mine. No, I wouldn't. Oh, I see. You've thought this whole thing out. Two cops camp out to bust their friend. What have we been doing the last month? What did you commit to? Oh, don't you throw that in my face! I work hard to provide, and 36000 a year doesn't cut it. You do the same thing. I wouldn't do the same thing. Does your word mean nothing to you? You signed the same thing we did, and you're throwing it down the toilet for what? An extra thousand a month? Adam, 
You've been lying to all of us, Shane. Your friends, your son, to God. Adam. I'm a fellow officer and a friend. You do not want to do this. You're right. I don't. Turn around. Put your hands on the wall. You're under arrest. This is a mistake. This is a mistake. You're, you're going to burn us all. Is that what you want? Is that really what you want? Is this what you want? We all agreed, Adam. We are doubly accountable. Very good, sir. I'll be back in just a few minutes with your appetizer. Thank you. Wow. Daddy, this place is nice. Isn't it expensive? Well, tonight's a special night. It's worth it to me. Well, what's so special about tonight? Jade, I brought you here because I want to tell you how grateful I am that God gave you to me. I see my daughter becoming a beautiful young woman. And I can understand how any young man would be drawn to you. But I would also like for you to know that as your father, I want the very, very best for you. One day I'll give you away to another man. And I want that man to love God more than anything. Because if he does, then he'll love you. And I know how young men think. They want to win your heart, but they don't know how to treasure it. So I'd like to make an agreement with you. Jade, if you'll trust me with your heart and allow me to approve any young man that desires to have more than a friendship with you, I promise to take care of you and give you my full blessing when God shows us the right one. Okay. Oh. Thank you. I have something to help us to remember this night. Jay, will you give me your left hand, please? Is this real? Yes, it is. This is meant to be worn until it's replaced by your wedding ring. Jade, I love you, sweetie. And from this night on, I want to treat you like the young woman that you are. Daddy, thank you so much. Oh, dear. Hey, Shane. Can't tell you what it's like to be on this side of the glass. 
Shane, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I knew what I was doing. I guess somewhere along the way I let go of the wheel. I know I couldn't get it back even if I wanted to. Shane, you've got to get right with God first. And then you've got to get right with your son. <laughs> I've lost him, Adam. No. You haven't lost him. He's hurting, but you haven't lost him. <sighs> you have to help me with Tyler. He, uh... Needs someone to look out for him. I'll look after him. You have my word. I don't want him to be like me. Adam, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Please. I forgive you. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'll come see you again, all right? Okay. Hey. Don't ever let go of the wheel. Never. I just picked up the mother load. Just had to get to the house and meet Tyrone. How much? Man, 40 stacks, dog. 40 stacks? TJ, that's crazy, man. We ain't playing Little League no more, D. Man, we going prime time. You got to tell Antoine. That's right, dog. Dog, I got two keys in the trunk right now. Two kilos? That's right. Who told you, man? We ain't playing. All we got to do is go cook it up. <laughs> it's Adam. Yeah. Hey, man, we were just talking about you. Good luck, we're coming up on Denson. All right, I'm about three miles behind you. Listen, we got to talk about this Father's Day deal. Can you guys come over sometime this week? We already talked about that. We decided that since you came up with the resolution, you're going to be the spokesman. It's only fair. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. We didn't agree to that. We got to vote. No, we already voted. David and I chose you. And look, you know how he's going to go with us. <laughs> if I do this, you owe me dinner. Hey, look, man, I got to go. We'll talk about this later. I got a green Cadillac. With a blown tail light. Hey, light him up for me, Dave. Yeah, I got you. I'll talk to you later. Oh, hold up, man. What is this cop doing? Oh. I ain't even speeding. I mean, y'all know we can't do this, man. Go. They bust us this time. That's an automatic 10 years. 10 years? Yo, what you gonna do, man? I just gotta get off this road. So I'll take him out before I go back to jail. Take him out? What, you gonna shoot him? Look, you wanna go to prison? Huh? Because if he searches this car, that's where you going. What is he doing? He better pull over before I get him for more than a blown out tail light. Go ahead and call it in. Can't do this, man. Can't shoot no cop. We ain't got no choice, Derek. Be cool. You want me to take this? No, I got it. All right. There's two of them, TJ. I can't shoot both. Shut up, man. You do what I tell you to do. Oh, man, I know this cop. 
about to get what he got coming to him. See, that's Jay's daddy. Sir, I need you to turn off the vehicle, put your hands on the wheel. So the reason I pulled you over is... Uh... No! Oh, Nine millimeter. I'm almost out of ammo. Twan, man, come here, man. Huh? You gotta shoot this for me, man. I can't hold this steel. Twan, come here. Get it to me. Get it to me. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. My ammo. Switch. Man, look! Swan! What? The ball! We need leverage, man. We gotta get up out of here. I'm out! I'm out! I'm out! We got him! I got him! I got him! I got him! I'm going after that girl! Stay with me! We're still back there! I'm moving! Take it to the right! You stay with me! Stay I with me! I got you! I got you! In front of the car! In front of the car! Ah! Go! Go! Give me your hands! Give me your hands! Give me your hands! Get out! Give me your hands! You got it! You got it! Nathan! Nathan! Stay with me! Get up! Get up! Get up. Get up. Get the girl. Help the girl. She's all right, man. She's with her dad. She's all right.
Hey, you okay? I do was strong. Hey, you looking like I'm feeling. I'm feeling like I'm looking. Okay, come on. Man, thank God for backup. Yep. You just be glad you fought the small guy. The small one. Hey, Victoria. I'm okay. Derek, what are you doing? Why are you with these guys? I ain't got nobody, man. Just ain't got nobody. You did good today, David. I mean, for a rookie, right? You're not a rookie. For the last six weeks, I've preached on God's design for fathers to be teachers, to be protectors, be providers. I read to you this resolution that was written and signed by the four men standing behind me. But instead of just talking about these men, I'm going to ask Adam Mitchell to come and speak to us. As a law enforcement officer, I've seen firsthand the deep hurt and devastation that fatherlessness brings in a child's life. Our prisons are full of men and women who have lived recklessly after being abandoned by their fathers, wounded by the men who should have loved them the most. Many of these children now follow the same pattern of irresponsibility that their fathers did. While so many mothers have sacrificed to help their children survive, they were never intended to carry the weight alone. We thank God for them. But research is proving that a child also desperately needs a daddy. There's no way around this fact. As you know, earlier this year, my family endured the tragic loss of our nine-year-old daughter, Emily. Her death forced me to realize that not only had I not taken advantage of the priceless time I had with her, but that I did not truly understand how crucial my role was as a father to her and our son, Dylan. Since her passing, I've asked God to show me through his word how to be the father that I need to be. I now believe that God desires for every father to courageously step up and do whatever it takes to be involved in the lives of his children. But more than just being there, providing for them, he's to walk with them through their young lives and be a visual representation of the character of God, their father in heaven. The father should love his children and seek to win their hearts. He should protect them, discipline them, and teach them about God. He should model how to walk with integrity and treat others with respect and should call out his children to become responsible men and women who live their lives for what matters in eternity. Some men will hear this and mock it or ignore it. But I tell you that as a father, you are accountable to God for the position of influence he has given you. You can't fall asleep at the wheel only to wake up one day and realize that your job or your hobbies have no eternal value but the souls of your children do. Some men will hear this and agree with it, 
but have no resolve to live it out. Instead, they will live for themselves and waste the opportunity to leave a godly legacy for the next generation. But there are some men who, regardless of the mistakes we've made in the past, regardless of what our fathers did not do for us, will give the strength of our arms and the rest of our days to loving God with all that we are and to teach our children to do the same. And whenever possible, to love and mentor others who have no father in their lives, but who desperately need help and direction. And we are inviting any man whose heart is willing and courageous to join us in this resolution. In my home, the decision has already been made. You don't have to ask who will guide my family, because by God's grace, I will. You don't have to ask who will teach my son to follow Christ, because I will. Who will accept the responsibility of providing and protecting my family? I will. Who will ask God to break the chain of destructive patterns in my family's history? I will. Who will pray for and bless my children to boldly pursue whatever God calls them to do? I am their father. I will. I accept this responsibility and it is my privilege to embrace it. I want the favor of God and his blessing on my home. Any good man does. So where are you men of courage? Where are you fathers who fear the Lord? It's time to rise up and answer the call that God has given to you. And to say, I will. I will. I will.